What's, yeah. the, what's the more dominant one? Quickly. <laughs> <laughs> a really deep, nasty noise. No. Just shove. <laughs> there you go. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK. And today we'll be looking at 10 shows that made people lose faith in the BBC. But who could possibly hate us this much? Well, it could be anyone who's seen the show. <laughs> Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at some of the most disappointing shows put out by the Beeb. Let us know in the comments which ones made you cancel your TV license. Snog Marry Avoid In the 2000s, Needlessly cruel makeover shows were all the rage, and the BBC tried its hand at making one at least once. Hello, I'm Hannah, and I spend my life trying to stand out. While Snog Marry Avoid still has a lot of entertainment value, plenty of people derided it as pure trash TV at the time. And in hindsight, it comes across as a bit mean-spirited. Yes, the people were eccentric, but did they really deserve to be ripped apart so thoroughly? by a fake computer. Oh my lord, you are mahogany. Thank you. You are white, aren't you? Yeah. So you would go out every day looking this brown? Yeah. Then again, on the other hand, it could have also made you lose faith in Britain as a whole to see that that's how some people were choosing to dress. Hannah, you are a streaky made up mess. What colour are you supposed to be? Um, I think my colour is very orange and glowing. Big top. Amanda Holden's made all manner of ill-fated sitcoms over the years, chief among them, The Holden Girls. I found this poster in town today. Circus Maestro, the UK's lousiest circus. Ooh. But we're going back in time a little bit for this one, to this late noughties Holden vehicle in which she plays Lizzie, the ringmaster and owner of a travelling circus. Gasp at our inflated ticket prices, groan at our useless jugglers, uh Yawn at our tedious clowns. A sitcom about a circus isn't the silliest idea, but Big Top just wasn't very funny at the end of the day. Though the circus premise might make you think Big Top was a bit more family friendly, it really wasn't one for the kids, making you wonder who it was made for. Maybe just Amanda Holden's most ardent fans. Well, if we're so terrible, how come we get a huge cheer when we finish? I think you've answered your own question then. <laughs> come back, Mrs. Noah. A decade before Red Dwarf would blast onto the small screen and the BBC was already trying its hand at a science fiction sitcom. I'm standing here in the Pontefract International Space Complex, otherwise known as PISC. It followed the antics of Mrs Gertrude Noah, an unassuming British housewife living in the 2050s who was accidentally launched into space on Britain's latest pioneering space station. Visiting with us today we have the winner of Modern Housewife magazine cookery competition 2050, Mrs. Gertrude Noah. For six entire episodes, we followed Mrs. Noah's life in orbit as everybody back on Earth desperately tried to bring her home. It's not the worst premise for a sitcom, but the execution was way off, probably because of how quickly it was rushed out. Over here, dear. Sorry, I'm late. Those dirt cheap BBC sets didn't help either. Coming of age. What is happening? I've got PMT. Do you know what that is? Isn't it like something to do with clocks? <laughs> Where over on E4, skins crashed into the world in 2007, the BBC was a bit behind, making Coming of Age, a comedy about six formers in Oxfordshire. Despite its similar premise, they couldn't be more different largely because Skins was good, and coming of age was dreadful. Oh, my name is DK, I'm incredibly cool. My God, this toddler's clearly a fool! My name is DK, I'm sexy and slight. What a pity you're obviously not very bright! It was uninspired, boring, and not funny. The characters were all bland, whiny stereotypes, making a comedy that neither adults nor the teenagers it was presumably aimed at could enjoy. Now then, can anybody tell me what this is. Ah, uh, mm -hmm. Yes, Darren. A chair. <laughs> no, it isn't. It is. No, it isn't. It was a miracle it had three series, since it seemed like nobody ever liked it. Mad About Alice. More Amanda Holden. For this one, she was joined by Jamie Theakston, as they each played one half of a divorced couple learning how to co-parent their son. Hi, Joe. Joe. Hi. <laughs> Alright, you've caught me. 
my hand in the biscuit jar. I'm a secret snacker. <laughs> <laughs> they bicker and row over the pettiest things while trying to keep their disagreements hidden from their child, who's a lot savvier than they give him credit for. No, don't go. Go in. She wants you to go in. Look at the way her front door's open. It's saying, come in, I want you now. <laughs> but again, it's a case of a comedy with a very simple premise that never really managed to have its own identity. Why doesn't she faint? I mean, he's a doctor. You fainted for a doctor once. Look where it got you. Its farcical situations fell flat, and basically everything that happened in it was something that you'd already seen dozens of times in far better shows. Mrs. Brown's Boys. What's wrong with you, Grandad? I haven't slept for three days. <laughs> the most divisive comedy in history, Mrs. Brown's Boys is still going strong, despite relentless attacks from critics and large swathes of the viewing public. A nepotism fest starring many of Brendan O'Carroll's family and friends, Mrs. Brown's Boys has remarkably lasted for years and spawned a feature film, despite people hating it so vocally. Head out on the big date, love. It's not a big date, Mummy. It's just a quiet drink. A quiet drink? That's what all men say. They think vodka's a lubricant to get your knickers off easy. <laughs> For many, it's a symbol of everything wrong with modern comedy in the British Isles, and they'd rather it got cancelled completely. Instead, it's now a long-running multimedia franchise that people are, for some reason, still watching. He said to the missus, that's a banana, not a willy. <laughs> it won't get bigger if you squeeze it. <laughs> Horrible. Johnny Vaughan's never been known for his acting ability, and this short-lived comedy shows you why. Yeah, so I had the villa, you know, the powerboat, the trophy blonde. Everyone wanted to be my best mate. <laughs> yeah, I've done it all, mate. Live the dream. Running for a whopping six episodes in the early 2000s, Horrible was a massive flop for the Beeb, made even more embarrassing by how much they thought it was a sure thing. Radio DJ Vaughan plays Paul Clark, a cabbie who's desperate to ingratiate himself with some Welsh mobsters hanging around West London. It was badly written and badly acted, with uninteresting characters and very little semblance of a plot. Right, where to? Just drive. Seatbelt. No wonder Vaughan never managed to build an acting career. The Royal Bodyguard. I believe you're expecting me. Guy Hubble. Royal Bodyguard. How could a David Jason comedy vehicle go so badly wrong? Well, it was a bad concept. And an even worse script, as Jason's unreasonably useless character is hired to protect Her Majesty after he accidentally saves her life. And that's why the royal family have stepped in and appointed someone to be their own special personal bodyguard. He gets into increasingly silly situations, including going undercover as a woman, faking his own death, and getting up to no good at a hen party. Born in Enfield, trained at Purbright, Catterick, uh, tours to Cyprus, Hong Kong. Please tell me it's not Guy Hubble. It was universally panned as an appalling spiritual follow-up to Only Fools and Horses, not making use of Jason's talents by tossing him into badly written, contrived scenes and bizarrely requiring he regularly takes his clothes off. My Life as an Animal, not a sitcom this time, but a baffling reality TV series that only aired four episodes back in 2009. See, that is sounding a little bit angry. Softer. <laughs> Yeah, softer noise. Yes. Presenter Rebecca Wilcox found a group of willing volunteers out there in the UK and roped them into pretending to be an animal for a week. They needed to learn how to talk the talk and walk the walk as a horse, dog and even a penguin. 30 hours into his life as a pig, and Richard has opened a line of communication. Why they're doing this experiment isn't really clear, nor why anybody willingly signed up to do this, unless the BBC paid them a pretty penny for crawling around and pretending to be a pig in front of the nation. <laughs> no, it's not working then, No, is no, it? no, she's... <laughs> Two pints of lager and a packet of crisps. Hello, Gas. Hello, gay boy. <laughs> 
one of the most legendary bad shows in British TV history, it's mind-boggling that two pints of lager and a packet of crisps ran for so long. I'm not gay. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm off to make my wife respect my heterosexuality. Also, I followed through a little bit and I need change. <laughs> It followed the lives of a group of 20-something layabouts, as they worked dead-end jobs, went to the pub and slept together, but it went on for so long that they were in their 30s by the end and still behaving immaturely. You said talking was for women and Kilroys. Oh, please. I don't want to lose you. You're my bit of stuff. Still though, it had plenty of fans for its 10-year run, until it eventually got cancelled, and it arguably brought Will Meller to a much wider audience. He's been trying but failing to get it revived in recent years. Yes, you are. You're asleep, and I'm not Donna. I am Florinda, the dancing bus conductor. Ooh, oh, oh. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.